Hi, we're here in beautiful downtown Edison, Washington to take a walkthrough tour of IE Gallery's new exhibit called Staff Picks. This particular piece is by Julie Pashkis. And Staff Picks is just what it says. It's the gallery owner turning over the reins to her staff. Both June Jones and Newt Warren to select, curate, and install an exhibit using what we have in our inventory. This particular piece is Alan Moe and it's oil on board. So let's go inside and see what we have. Here we are indoors. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the exhibit. I think it's beautiful. They did an incredible job. There are, I believe, 11 artists in this exhibit, and Newt Warren, who was the lead on this curating and installation, is going to talk to us about this selection. So let's scoot over and say hi to Newt over here at the beginning of the exhibit. Hi, hi Newt. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, thank you for allowing us yeah. to be here and do it. Um, so we'll begin by saying that the visual connection between all of the pieces chosen for the show is what really brought everything together. Mm -hmm. And if you move around the room, as I noticed most visitors to IE do, clockwise, mm -hmm. beginning in this corner, mm -hmm. you'll notice that the forms begin relatively simple. Mm -hmm. Dots, lines, color. And as you move around the room, they get gradually more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, but no matter which way you start here in the room, you'll find this connection in the other direction. So hmm. we begin inside with Katie Epstein. Mm -hmm. We have several more of her prints available for view in her portfolio, as well as some other portfolios by artists in this exhibit. Mm -hmm. And she's also done needlepoint and watercolor and yeah. That's gorgeous. As we move clockwise, we come to a familiar pieces by Louise Kikuchi. These are Sumi and Bonsai on paper. Mm -hmm. I'll do some close-ups here. Will you just... And from what I understand, the Gansai is the mineral-based watercolor that's either mineral or vegetable, rather, and it's what gives the color to all, all of what otherwise would just be the carbon-based sumi. Something that both June Jones and I really wanted to showcase in this January exhibition was a lot of color and movement to mm. sort of bring us out of our winter slump. Mm-hmm. That really comes across. It's a, it's a light, airy show, but a lot of substance here. What about this triptych here? So this triptych is titled Nurse Law by a new artist to IE. Her name is Shirley Shire, and she'll have a um, solo show with us here in the next few months. Mm. So keep a lookout for that. Mm. This piece is acrylic on panel. You really get that movement and light and color that you're talking about in this piece. And it kind of moves you across to the next wall in a beautiful way, too. This is kind of almost river-like when I'm looking at it, but it's, from what I know of Shirley's work, she says that she does pieces that she'll walk through the woods and then painting is almost like a memory of the feelings of walking through the woods. That's Nurse Log. Yeah. So should we head next to the back wall or to the... We should um, go to the... Go to the middle of the room. Okay. 
So the sculptures that we have in the show are all by Robin Green. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I really love about these pieces and a lot of her older works from this era, mm -hmm. 2020 or so, are that they act as reliquaries for the organic forms that initiated the piece. So what Robin has done mm -hmm. is taken um, rel plants, herbs, etc., and encased them in the ceramic. And as it's fired, they turn to ash and settle at the bottom mm -hmm. of the ceramic. So all of these are hollow. Gorgeous. So it's like entombed. Yes, exactly. Huh. A really beautiful tomb for each Yeah, of yeah, and that's why they kind of have that base too, which mm -hmm. is suitable. And if I remember correctly, she used like maple seed pods for this one. Yes. Which seed. around here, I think they've always called those, those helicopters pods. I love the shadows they create too. Yeah, they're gorgeous. They feel like shrine-like to me. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love, yeah. Reverent of the natural form as well as the created form by the hand of the artist. Huh. And these three that are in the show are these beautiful, light, almost ephemeral pastels mm -hmm. that I think work really well against this mm -hmm. dark back wall. Mm -hmm. And they're, um, they're neutral, but they carry some color. I mean, they're very earth tone in their way. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at this back wall with these pieces, and it's so beautifully orchestrated with that visually. Um, should we start out at the back wall here? Yeah, let's move to your piece, Margie. Okay. This diptych. You mentioned um, that Shirley Shire's Nurse Log feels like a memory of her time walking through the woods. And if I recall correctly, this diptych is sort of a memory of swimming in lakes at night. Would you mm -hmm. say something? Yeah. Yeah, it's that drive up to Lake Samish that you and I were talking yeah. about a little bit ago. Only it's from here you go up sometimes Colony Road and up through the hills and wind around and it's crazy. And then you get to the lake. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is probably my favorite diptych of Margie's from uh -huh. her most recent session of work. I just love the bright contrast and the color palette that she's chosen. And even without the context for the creation of this piece, that feeling comes across. It's very Pacific Northwest to me. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and it's a breakaway for color for me because I started using pastel in the last couple years mixed in with oil. So you get more intense shots of color. And that texture really brings up those pigments. Yeah. And then of course, Jeff Gunn here next to me. Yeah, talk to us about these pieces, Newt. Yeah. So as we were going through our storage and all of the wonderful pieces that we have for IE at our disposal, Jeff Gunn has always been an artist that stood out to me. And this piece in particular, Wind Over Earth, has always been a favorite of mine. So I really wanted to have it in the show. Oh. It's got those beautiful little shots of red. I'm going to get up close so we can see those. And this, this is encaustic. As we've moved from the right side of the room to this back left corner mm -hmm. into Jeff's work. We're starting to see more of a landscape mm -hmm. in the pieces here. Mm -hmm. And especially with Jeff as he's inspired by Asian prints from 
would you say the 18th mm -hmm. to the 19th century, mm -hmm. a lot of those rocks and wind and tree forms are represented in yeah. his choices here, his um, placement. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love seeing these in this new um, <clears throat> arrangement. I think June and you and I have talked about how when you pull these pieces out of the, their past exhibits and put them in a new exhibit, they can shine in a different way. Mm -hmm. You notice things you may not have noticed before. Yeah, absolutely. And these are three encaustics, and then I think one is a, is this a, um, what do you call it, collage, Seems, cut yeah. up, cut up painting re reconstructed. Yeah, if you get close to this piece here, you'll see strips of paper that have been pasted together and then pulled cohesively with this shimmery gold. Mm. You can tell he studied calligraphy for a long time. Those look beautiful on that gray wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Should we move on? Sure. So moving from Jeff into this very unique Ed Camuto piece. This is gouache on paper from somewhere in the 1990s. For me, who's become more familiar with Ed Camuto's work over the past year or so, this is very unique compared to a lot of the other um, oil paintings we have of his. Mm -hmm. um, it's much larger, it's on paper, and I would say without knowing, the only thing that I can see is similar to the pieces we've come to know by Ed, is his color palette here. Mm -hmm. This landscape is very realistic compared to what we know of him. Mm -hmm. And except his, his plein air, it almost looks like a huge plein air painting that he did outside. Um, except I know he probably didn't do it. <laughs> he could have. <laughs> the other thing it's missing is his signature mm. that we see in a lot of his smaller mm -hmm. panel paintings. Mm -hmm. That little um, character. Mm -hmm. And that's on the back of this one. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's, it's beautiful, so yeah. And it's probably the closest to realism that we have in this exhibit, don't you think? I would say that's yeah. what we see, yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then how about this piece? This is a Deborah Walker watercolor art paper that I thought looked really beautiful next to that Camuda. Um, this one is titled Following the Path of Water. Mm. And Deborah has a real command for watercolors, something that I have little experience using myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm always impressed to see the way that watercolor painters manage to delineate the forms that they mean to mm -hmm. and muddle the forms that they mean to. I think it's a really beautiful it's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. It looks so southwesty in a way. It does. She has a real skill for handling the medium, mm -hmm. and that's shown here. It's interesting because she and Ed, of course, that's water base, and Heidi Epstein. Mm -hmm. Heidi Epstein and Deborah both let the um, watercolor kind of migrate or move across on its own will, move across the paper a little bit. Um, and Deborah does it a lot, and I only know that because I've talked to her about it about five years ago, and she, so that often is what creates the shapes. It's almost the migration of the water is what determines what the shape is. Mm. Interesting in our, yeah. in our, country today with the water moving around so much. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then as we wrap up, we have this 
Brown has the exhibit here at this front corner. We have Judy Talley's woodblock prints. These four we showcased at the Seattle Art Fair. Um, mm. Last summer, if you were able to join us for that, these may be familiar to you. Mm. These are so rich, the color. And we were just talking before we started filming about how unusual it is to find people doing woodblocks these days, woodblock prints. Yeah, I love this. I love this little grouping. Like it's almost like a suite, but they're individually sold. And then we have this. This is also a Judy Tally woodblock wash and if you were to step back which we will do here in a moment mm -hmm. it works really well with the Heidi and um, oh, yeah. these Kikuchi pieces that we have yeah I'll move across that way this is so Skagit looking isn't it the um, this field of grass mm -hmm. that particular one and so then we round out the exhibit coming back to Heidi and Louise. And I think if you were to exit shortly after visiting with the Judy and the Heidi, those pieces then speak really well to those that we have on the outside facing the uh, window. Oh, that's right, that we started with the Alan Moe and which is the most figurative. That's right. That show. Yeah. Lots of color there. Well, I am so happy with this exhibit, and so far the audience, the the people coming in have been loving it. So. Yeah. I love it. I think it turned out great. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Judy and I are both really proud of it, and I think Marty said Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, you guys have a lot of talent. So um, this is up through the 20... Is it the 29th? I believe so. We look have, us, let, let us look at our card. Yeah. 29th, we've got some cards here. Okay. Okay. Um, Thanks so much. So come in and see us, Newt or June or I. Thank you. Thanks so much, Newt. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye.